Okay, so we're going to get going as we usually do in this short 30 minute class and we're going to start in downward facing dog. So come on around to down dog. So if any of you took my Wednesday um, moderate, this is going to be similar, um, but just shorter. Um, so we're going to work on those hip flexors and the piriformis a little bit. So as we're here in downward facing dog, just start to find some movement. Whatever feels good, there's no right or wrong as usual. Just start to play with the body. Maybe rocking back and forth from plank to down dog, maybe even dipping the hips down and coming into a mini kind of up dog there. Whatever feels right and good for your body. And let's take it down to extended child's pose. And find the breath there for a moment. So let the belly relax. Let me make sure my hair is situated here. I tried to wear it down again and it didn't work, so. <laughs> Oh, finding that breath here. Can you take a nice deep breath all the way down into the belly? Soften the jaw. Bring all your awareness to that breath. Feel it fill up the body. All the way down. See if you can get it all the way down to the pubic bone or the perineum even, right down to our base, right down to that root chakra. One more nice big breath here. And let's bring it back up to downward facing dog. All right, let's press it on back, stretch it on out. Give those shoulder blades a little squeeze. Not prepared this morning. I know I can't wear my malas when I teach and I still try. <laughs> All right, let's bend that right knee, sink the left heel down, press back, feel that nice stretch and switch. And go back and forth, pedaling the feet. All right, let's bend those knees, lift the heels off the floor and push on back. So keep a bend in the knees as you push back, draw the belly in, give the shoulder blades a squeeze and just see how far back you can press. And inch those feet forward, keeping your heels lifted off the floor. Feet are on railroad tracks, so the feet are apart and we're keeping those heels lifted. Squat on down. So some of you will be able to come all the way down and sit right down on that calf, the whole leg and the heels lifted and you can bring those hands up to the heart. So because of my other leg, I can't get that low, but I can still be here. I can just come to here. So find that breath, however low you can go. If your hands get off the floor, great. If not, oh well, get a drishti, get a focal point and get the breath. Slowly start to lift up, keeping your heels off the floor. Lift your heels, keep your focal point. This is a balance. Try and spread the weight evenly across the ball of the foot. So all the way from the big toe to the pinky toe. Lift the heels higher and very, very slowly with control, bring them down nice and slow. If you lost it, who cares? Go back up and try again. Eventually those heels float all the way down. Inhale up, exhale, dive it down. Inhale, half lift. And exhale, bend those knees, step those feet back to plank. Look back at those feet, make sure they're on those railroad tracks, give or take four to six inches apart, find your plank. Inhale, push up, 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 up. More, more than you think you need to or should. Drop your knees down and push up again. How straight can you get the arms? How far away from the floor can you push the collarbone? Inhale, exhale, bend the elbows just a little without letting the collarbone drop. 
I should have said yeah, this X, I don't know. Inhale, push up. <laughs> Spread those fingers, press into the heels of the palms as you press up, up, up. Try not to round that upper back. So we're just pushing up through the armpits, just through the shoulders, not the heart. Inhale, exhale, little baby push up. Inhale, up, exhale, down just a little, just trying to strengthen those triceps. All right, let's take it to the floor. Inhale, cobra. Squeeze those glutes, draw those elbows in, peel those shoulders way away from the ears. How open can you get that chest? How forward can you pull that heart and have it feel good? Inhale, exhale, come on down. Inhale, up. Finding that balance between exploring and kind of pushing a little bit, but not forcing. Not pressuring, right? It's good to push ourselves a little, but there's a difference between pushing ourselves a little and forcing. Tuck those toes under, push straight up, nice and strong and slow. Keep those toes tucked as you press the hips back towards the heels. Keep those toes tucked, stretch out the bottoms of the feet and bring it on up into our downward facing dog. Once again, on those railroad tracks, press on back. So pivot the hips forward, sticking your butt up towards the ceiling as you sink the heels down and then draw the nose towards the floor. Ooh, good morning, back to the legs. Bend those knees, tiptoe those feet forward again, this time bringing the feet together when you get there. Okay, same exact thing we did, feet are all the way together. Though. Big toes are touching, ankles are hugging in, knees are hugging in together, sit back down. So again, if you can get all the way down and sit right down, on that heel and that calf, great. If not, just get as low as you can and see if you can take those hands off the floor, hug the knees together, find the breath. Lift up a little, hands are still in prayer, twist to the left, sorry. <laughs> see how my hip pushes off to the side, bring it back behind the knees, push the knee and elbow together, so the knees are staying over the toes. Sink your heels down if they're not. <laughs> I was doing that with my heels up off the floor. And then twist. Good morning, upper back. For evening, whenever you're watching this. Hands back at the heart. I got to stop saying that. I can't. The habit. Other side. <laughs> and back to center. Sink those hips back down low. Reach those arms out in front of you. Draw the belly in. Keep those knees pressing together. As you lift on up the, off the thighs, but stay sinking down low, shift your weight into your heels a little bit so your toes are light, and then slowly bring those arms up alongside the ears. Inhale up, exhale, release those arms down and back to the heart. Inhale up, exhale, dive it down, feet together. Half lift and step those feet back to plank. Get them back where they belong. Find your plank. Inhale, push up, 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 way, way, way up. And knees down, lie down. Nice, Cora, big inhale. And exhale, bring it down, tuck those toes, push up strong and press back to those heels and bring it up back to our downward facing dog. Press it back, stretch it out. Pivot those hips forward, sticking your butt up towards the ceiling as you straighten out the legs and sink the heels down, drawing the nose towards the floor, getting that stretch again. And walk those feet to the front. Keep your heels down or get your heels down when you get there. We're on railroad tracks, half lift, inhale. Exhale, hinge. And all the way up into the heart. Inhale. And exhale, die. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, step that right foot back to low lunge. So nice big step back. Lift that knee up, sink the left hip down. So it's nice and low. Come on up to the knee. Keep that back knee up. Keep that back leg strong and straight as you sink into it. Draw the shoulders back so you can stay here and kind of just push away from the knee and inhale, lift the chin. And exhale, dive forward. It's balancing. Feel free to grab a block and put it underneath that right hand. 
Okay, so a couple options here. We can go here, just keeping that hand on the thigh, diving forward, that's a little balancing. We can sweep the arms up, inhaling way up and exhaling. If your fingertips hit the floor, great. If not, again, that block on the under the right hand really helps with balance, okay? So that's gonna be our exhales, diving forward, left leg as straight as you can get it. Inhale, sweep up into our crescent lunge. Exhale, dive down. You can do this with your knee down if you have to. Not a problem, not a big deal. All right, the next time you dive it down, pause there, stretch it out. And then bend that knee, plant your right palm down, bring it in towards center a bit and open up that left arm, press away from the floor, reach for the ceiling, spin that chest open to the side, sink the hips down as you open up. See if you can get all the way into the outside of that left hip, you're twisting so much and you're keeping that hip right behind the knee. And bring it around back to center, move that hand back over so you can step it back to plank. Inhale, exhale, knees down, one, cobra. And down, tuck those toes, go straight back to down dog this time, right up to down dog. And press it on back. Right leg rises, nice big inhale, lift it high, exhale, kick it through to that thumb, take a moment to get nice and low, exactly where we just were on that other side. <clears throat> Rise up when you're ready, Sit, get situated so you're solid there, adjust that foot, those back toes should be aiming straight forward, sink your heel down to find it. So you're either on the thigh and just moving like this or using that block, Inhaling, lifting the heart and chin. Exhaling, diving it in. Maybe you're sweeping those arms up for the full variation. I call this flowing lunge. All right, the next time you dive it down, pause there, bring that left hip forward, find your stretch. And then bend that knee, plant that left palm down towards center as you sweep that right arm open, push away, then reach it up, sink it down and spin open. Find that breath, don't forget to breathe. Come back down, move that left hand over so you can step it back to our plank once again. Inhale, exhale, knees down, lie down, cobra. Walk those hands forward until you can get the elbows down for sphinx. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, press into the elbows to push away from the floor, draw the shoulders back, lift the belly button away from the floor as you squeeze the glutes and try and pull that heart forward. And tuck those toes, lift those knees up into forearm plank. So don't let those hips go higher than the shoulders. Mat is just barely long enough for me. It's one of those 68 inch mats. Lift the knees up, sink the hips down, push the collarbone away from the floor, find the breath. Come to the outside of that left foot, open up to the right into forearm side plank. If you can't stack the feet, then you can bring one foot in front or behind. Bring it back around to forearm plank. I really wish this heat would shut off now. <laughs> find it, find your breath. And the other side for our side plank. And bring it on back around. Get situated back in your forearm plank. Don't worry, we're not gonna hold it too long. Find it though. Then lift those hips up. Walk those feet forward into Arta Pinch and Mayarasana. Half feathered peacock. I know a lot of people call this dolphin, but the actual translation is half feathered peacock. Arta is half 
Myra is uh, feathered. Uh, Arda. <laughs> Arda Pincha. Pincha, that's what I'm missing. I'm like, I'm missing something. Pincha is feathered. Myra, Myra is peacock. All right, drop those knees down. Inch those elbows back and bring those arms along the sides into child's pose. And bring it on back up. Lift all the way up to those knees, all the way up so you're standing on your knees. Bring your hands behind your hips. Squeeze those shoulder blades and elbows together. Scoop your tailbone underneath and squeeze your glutes. Keep your elbows reaching for each other as you lift your heart up to the sky. Feel free to flip your fingers down if that's available. Feel free to go deeper into this if it's available. I can go fingers up with the elbows squeezing together. Slowly bring it forward and use your core to lift you forward and pop on up to down dog. Pedal the feet, rock the hips, release that low back. All right, let's bring that. Uh, it doesn't matter. Well, the left leg, we can bring the left leg up. Nice, inhale, lift it high. Exhale, shift forward, knee to chest, squeeze in. Try to touch your cheek to your nose or your, or try, try, to, try, try to touch your knee to your nose or your cheek and stretch it out. I can't talk this morning. Stretch it up, inhale, exhale, shift it forward, squeeze, 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 touch. Back up, inhale. Exhale, squeeze in, how? Squeeze in, can you get, can you round out that back a little more? And shift it forward, drop the knee down for pigeon pose. So take a moment, get situated. I'm just gonna work on stretching this knee, so I'm not gonna come down into the full pose. And you guys know how to get there. Make sure you've got those nice square hips out with my knee. I haven't been doing my stretches. Keep that breath going wherever you end up. Don't look at me because I'm not doing pigeon right now. I'm doing a stretch that mimics pigeon. So as you settle in here, draw the belly down towards the floor, draw the chest, the whole torso down towards the floor. Try not to reach forward, keep your elbows, so you might bring your elbows out to the sides and rest your head on your hands if that's available for you. If you're not getting enough stretch, then move that left foot forward a little more. But try and keep those hips nice and level in the back. I could come and set my teacup right on your, the back of your hips and it would stay nice and solid. All right, let's take it back up to our down dog. Kick that leg up high and bring it on down. Okay, other side, lift that right leg up. Nice, inhale, lift it high. Exhale, knee to chest, squeeze in, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Touch that nose to that knee or that cheek to that knee. Lift it up, inhale, exhale, squeeze. Inhale. And exhale, hold and squeeze, squeeze, breathe, breathe, curl in a little more and then release it on down to the floor for your pigeon pose. Take a moment to find it. You should inch that back leg back. Start on those elbows, take a moment, see how much stretch you have. Adjust that right foot accordingly. And then maybe inch those elbows out as you pull the torso down towards the floor. Finding the breath here, noticing how this side feels compared to the other. Keep that breath going. As the mind wanders, bring it back to the sensations in the body, bring it back to the breath. All right, let's bring it back up to our down dog. Kick that leg high and bring it on down. Stretch it back. 
Again, walk those feet forward, back to the front of your mat. Half lift, inhale, exhale, hinge, and all the way up into the heart. All right, let's, um, if you're on carpet, you definitely wanna step off of your mat. If you can find a hard surface to stand on for a moment, even better for our Utita Hasta Pada Angustasana. Boy, when I learned how to say that, that was, that was so exciting and fun. <laughs> it's hand to big toe pose, right? So shift your weight over to that right foot. Take a moment to get it solid. You can just start with grabbing the knee instead of the foot, right? So we can always grab the knee here. We can just do this. We can open it up to the side and this can be our, instead of toe, knee, right? If you can reach down and grab that big toe with your first two fingers and wrap those fingers around, maybe you kind of just get here, right? But then stand back up and get that right leg nice and strong. Find your drishti, find your breath. Just find somewhere where you can stand. This is a balance pose. So if we can't stand on one foot, the balance is irrelevant. So it doesn't matter what you're grabbing, whether it's the knee or the foot or not. Okay, so if you're grabbing the foot, see if maybe you can kick the foot away a little bit. It might not come all the way straight. We have the hamstrings a little warmed up, but not super warmed up. So if you're tight in those hamstrings, this might not happen. I have ridiculously long arms. So I make this look easy. My arms are almost as long as my legs, <laughs> right? So. Make it look easy. Maybe you take it out to the side, whether you're holding the foot or the knee. Keep that breath going wherever you end up. You can do it on this side. I don't know if I'll be able to do it on the other. Bring it back to center if you're off to the side. Bring it back in, interlace the fingers below the knee, pull the knee into the chest and let it go. All right, give a little shake. So if you're really working the hip the way you should be in that standing pose, it's, you're gonna feel a little fatigued there. So if you don't feel that, really try and work that outer hip a little bit more and that will help you stay a little more solid in your balance pose. Okay, let's try the other side. So take a moment. So my glutes on this other side are weak. My whole leg is weak. So we'll see how it goes. Starting with the knee to chest, getting my drishti, getting my breath, and moving slowly from there. Don't just jet off to where you know you can go. Let it be a journey. Like I know I can get that leg out to the side. Well, I don't on the, I don't know that on this side, but I know I used to be able to, right? And I could just go right over to that other pose. But it's about the journey as well and the transition from one place to the other. Find where you can be. Remember, part of our goal here is to balance on one foot. So if you can't come into the full pose, who cares? Can you find a way to really get solid and balance on one foot and maybe just go a half an inch further from there? Keep that breath going. Bring it back to center if you're out to the side. Release the foot. Come back to the knee, pull the knee up into the chest and release. And give a little shake in those hips and bring it on down to the floor, right into Paschimottanasana. So let's keep that nice flat back, get into the backs of those legs. Legs are close. Maybe you push from the outside of the hips if you're really tight here. Maybe this is an open spot for you. You can go for those toes and grab them. And maybe you're a little rounded when you get there, but once you grab onto those toes, you can use them to roll your shoulders back and pull your heart forward and find your stretch. Maybe give a little wiggle from side to side to free up those sitting bones and release. Hello. Bring that right foot into the thigh. So you can bring it anywhere you want. Traditionally, it's as far up into the inner thigh as it will go. And then you're kind of bringing that foot back in, trying to square the hips off as you come forward. 
or Janu Shirshasana. So let that right knee just fall down. Again, if you can grab the toe, great. That's not our goal. Our goal is to come forward as far as we can, keeping a flat back. So lift that heart up. Again, maybe push from outside the hips to maintain that flat back. Nice, inhale, come up. Exhale, twist to the left, that extended leg side. Come back to center, reach that left arm up. Nice, inhale, exhale, over to the side for a side bend. Keep that chest open, keep that arm in line with the hip as you go, finding that breath. And come on back up, straighten that leg out, bring the other one in. So if you have any knee stuff or hip stuff going on like I do, you just put the foot wherever you can, right? So on the other side, I shouldn't have brought it up as far as I did, but I just wanted to do it. <laughs> so this side's a little different for me. So finding your way forward once again, keeping that breath going. And come on up, sit up nice and tall. Inhale, exhale, twist to the right. So that left hand comes over to outside the leg to help you twist. Try to keep that head right above the hips. And slowly release, bring that right arm up. Nice inhale, exhale, come on over into your side bend. And bring it on back, bring the feet together into Baddha Konasana, bound angle. Lift up, pull your hips forward, your sitting bones back, and then come back down and draw those knees down towards the floor. So if you can grab your feet and open them like a book, my feet are too far away because my knee won't bend. So traditionally, I mean, generally speaking, for most people, if you bring your feet closer, it lets the knees drop down a little bit more. Um, and so if I, could bend this other leg, if I could get my foot where I used to, that knee drops right down. And then I can pull the hips forward and grab onto those feet. And I can come forward now. But with my foot, my feet further forward, <laughs> because of the lack of the bend in that knee, I can't, my hips pull back and my knees pop up. So again, you can play around where the feet are, but generally speaking, if they can come closer, it lets those knees fall a little better and lets the hips come forward. This, the full pose is a forward bend, right? So if you're one of those people that is able where your knee just almost drops to the floor and you can pull forward and come into a forward bend with a flat back, then go for it. That puts quite a pinch on my knee when I do that. But you can play around with it a little bit. All right, let's release that. So yogi's choice for our um, final relaxation, you can find a comfortable seat um, in a seated meditation, a seated relaxation. You can come up, if you want to do that, feel that, you know, energy line going up and down the spine, come up against a wall, maybe if you have one available to you, if you don't want to put effort into being seated, a prop underneath, even just grabbing a block and putting it underneath allows you to come into that meditation pose where the knees fall down and the heels are in line and those hips just naturally stay there. It's a little easier, right? So you can come here. We're only gonna be here for a couple, two minutes, three minutes max. If you wanna lay down, go ahead and lay down. In Shavasana. So take a moment to settle in to your seat or your reclined pose. Once you arrive, close those eyes. And find the breath. Feel the body soften. So if you're in that seat, especially if you can get into that meditation pose where you, there's very little effort in sitting upright, you can relax there. Even if you let those shoulders relax, 
and soften the spine a little bit. You can see how you can relax there. And obviously if you're in Shavasana, the body can relax even more. But as much as we talk about the body relaxing in our final relaxation, right? It's just a, as much about the mind, but we spend a bit of time relaxing the body so that the body is not an impingement upon our relaxing of the mind. Like if we've got something uncomfortable going on in the body, that's what we're gonna focus on instead of the mind being able to relax, so. Letting the body relax. If there's any thing that's poking or pinching or bothering you, readjust. And then find the breath. Find a nice, slow, long, deep breath. Back to that big belly breath that we did in extended child's pose at the beginning. Let the belly just expand, nobody's watching. Nobody can see. You're not making it expand. You're filling up your lungs so much that the diaphragm is pressing downward into your organs and that's what makes the belly expand, right? And so the deeper breath you can take, the more you fill up the lungs, the more likely that you can get that breath to go all the way down to our pelvic floor, to our root chakra. Root chakra is our safety, our security. So you need that sense of safety and security today, really focus on the energy of that breath flowing right down to that place. And if you need more of a sense of power today, like this internal power, like confidence, energy, then maybe it's that solar plexus that we focused on last week. Either way, find the breath and send the energy where you feel like you need it in this moment. Even if you can't actually feel the breath in that place, imagine the prana, the energy of the breath going to that place, just for a couple breaths here. Can you be completely consumed by the energy flowing into wherever it needs to go? Maybe it's your knee, maybe it's your ankle, maybe it's the heart center, maybe it's the third eye. Two more nice breaths here with all of your focus, all of your intention being completely consumed with these two breaths. Obviously, if you're in seated, you can stay right there. If you're not in seated, come on up. Take your time. Keep your eyes closed if you can on your journey. And a little different today. Once you get up to seated, allowing those hands, and obviously if you're already in seated, once you're in seated, bring those hands up to the third eye. So the third eye is right above the eyebrows, it's like below, depending on your forehead, it, it's basically the center of the forehead, give or take. So bringing kind of the heels of the thumbs right up there. Take a nice inhale there. May I have knowledge. Bring it down to the heart. Tucking the chin. May I feel love. Bring it down to the belly, bowing a little more. May I find peace throughout my day. Bowing down a little more, saying thank you to yourself for showing up here on your mat, taking this time for you. <laughs> 